Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening to FASA Coliseum participants and YouTube live viewers. Grateful to God Almighty that with his blessings, we are able to gather virtually tonight. For the last week, we have Sarah Nabila as our host, but tonight I'm Sarah Rosina, your host for today. This is the first time ever Faculty of Science Students Association, FASA, held an online quiz competition, a game show. This is the birth of FASA Coliseum, which is open to all undergraduates, faculty of science students. To conduct this quiz, we'll be using quizzes as our platform. The quiz questions incorporate topics from biology, chemistry, physics, and mathematics as a whole. For your information, we have around 200 participants last week competing against each other to qualify themselves for this round, which is semi-final round, guys. After our first round, we have now got 80 brilliant participants all hoping they can make it to the next Saturday night, final round and win our biggest prize. Dear participants, um, are you ready for this semi-final round tonight? All right. Here we go. Dear participants, please check our WhatsApp group for the link to access the quizzes. And to all my dear YouTube viewers, if you have any question about the quiz, feel free to put in the chat down below. We will have a Q&A segment at the end of the session. Now, without further ado, I will introduce to you guys our intelligent, brilliant panel that will be with us tonight. Here we go. Firstly, we have Iswan from Department of Biology. Assalamualaikum and hi guys. Are you ready for hi, tonight? Hi Iswan. Hi Sarah. <laughs> How are you Iswan? I'm fine, thank you. How about you? Are you ready yeah, for tonight? Great, great. Okay, great. let's go and rock and roll. <laughs> All right, next we have Akila from the Department of Chemistry. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Akila. Are you excited for tonight, Akila? Yes, of course. I'm so excited. <laughs> great, great. All right, we're now going to Department of Physics. We have Ramzia. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Ramzia. How are you today? I'm great. You are looking so beautiful today, Sarah. Oh, thank you very much. You too. All right. Lastly, we have from Department of Mathematics, we have Aina Anissa. Hi everyone. Hi Sarah. Hi Aina. Are you excited for tonight, Aina? Of course. Are you excited, Sarah? Yes. Oh, I'm sure you're excited for tonight. This is the semi-final round. Tonight we will see who are going to the final round, right? Yes. Okay. Guys. Look at your face, they are so intelligent, right? All right, without further ado, um, while we wait for all participants to enter the Discord room, let's watch who the group that will compete each other tonight. All right, so for your information, tonight we have 80 brilliant participants that are divided into four, uh, into 20 groups, and each of the group have four members, which are from chemistry, physics, biology, and mathematics. So for the first group, 
we have group no secret no secret <laughs> all right okay moving on to the next group we have gladiator impact wow such a cool name huh okay third group we have charlie angels Ooh, i bet this group are all women right <laughs> okay the fourth group we have quadrupigolio Ooh, quite interesting name rare name right okay next for the fifth group we have science musketeers all right look at the cat so cute right <laughs> and yeah. the sixth group we have team of silence oh it's such um quite a same name with the no secret silence no secret but they are in Silesia, right mm. and the seventh group um we have heliantus eight group we have infinite infinite uh infinite i guess that's the correct pronunciation mm. and, and the ninth group next we have who do we have? Semampu boleh. Yeah. Good. Okay, this is quite a rare name. How should I pronounce this? Prodigious, I guess. Prodigious. Okay, next we have Met Five Ke Bio. <laughs> oh my god, this is so hard. Met Five Ke Bio. And we have science body. Next, we have for the next we have the Eve. So cute. And this one we have for the next group we have Capella. Okay, uh, I bet they're so good in singing as well. And we have Lofi. Is it Lofi or Iofi? Okay, next we have Sansporium. And for the next group, we have Dream Team. Cool, cool name. And Staycation, we have Staycation as well as their name, group name. I bet they miss to have the vacation, right? And we also have group named Curry Pop. Cute, right? Kui Mui. And the last group, we have the 20s. Next. All right, that's all the group of our participants. Ooh, we have a commentator. We have a viewers from our YouTube site, okay? From Nur Ayn Azhar. Go team Helianters, woo! <laughs> all right, and we also have from Nur Afrika Badru Hisham. Good luck team Capella. Oh my God, they all have their own supporter as well. Idil Ashraf, curry pop ni mesti leadernya Nas. <laughs> I bet. Good luck, staycation. Jangan bertenang sangat. From North Africa, Badru Hisham. Yeah, because they love to have vacation, right? But it's okay. Relax, relax, but still um, doing great in this competition. Okay. Um, you guys also can follow us in our Instagram and also you guys can subscribe to our channel in YouTube which is FASA Studio, okay? Latest information, latest faculty information you will get at 
our Facebook and Instagram page, Pasa underscore UPM. Well, you can also watch this live and other video in our YouTube channel, Pasa Studio. All right. I bet all the participants are eager to answer tonight, right? Okay. Nice. I'm pretty sure that the participants are eager to start the quiz. So without further ado, shall we start the countdown, guys? Shall we? Yes, I bet. Okay. Yes. Let's <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's come together, panel. Unmute your mic. Let's come together. From Let's go. Five, four, four, three, three, two, 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 all right, for the first question, what sort of electricity do you get when you rub two balloons and mix it together? Why do you think the answer is? Is it static electricity or high voltage or kinetic electricity? What do you guys think the answer is? I'm mistaken, guys. Come on. Time's up. Let's see who lead the board right now for the first question. So we have science buddy. All right, for this question, I bet you guys know this is from Department of Physics question. So who would like we who we would like to have tonight? Of course, we will have Miss Ramzia from Department of Physics. Can you explain further for this question? Sure, Sarah. Thank you. And here in this question, uh, it says that what sort of electricity do you get when you rub two balloons and they stick together? So uh, in this situation, uh, when we rub two balloons, there will be a stationary electric charge produced typically uh, by the friction between the two balloons. So here, uh, in the result of the imbalance between charges in the object will result to the attraction between the two balloons. This is why when we rub the two balloons, uh, they will stick together. So, I uh, will, and here the right answer will be static electricity. And wow, I'm so happy that all of them uh, get it correct. Wow, well, well that's great. Yeah, well done and congratulations to all our participants. Okay, correct. I bet this is a quite an easy question, right? Okay, moving on to the next question, please. Question number two will be so the question two is x is a factor of 20 x is a multiple of five what is x x is two or x is six or x is ten or x is twenty five what you guys think that x is hmm I bet mm, when we see number, mathematics students must be mm, right, so you can answer this easily. Time up. Who lead the board now? All right, you can see science body still lead on the board. Okay, when we see number, who you guys think that will be explained about this question? Who do you guys think? Anyone? Okay. All right. I think this question will fit to the, our panelists from Department of Mathematics. So, Miss Aina Alisa, can you explain further about this question, please? Yeah, thank you, Sarah. So for x is a factor of 20, from the, the, from the answer, we know that 2 and 10, which is the factor of 20. To find the exact answer for the x, which is 10, that you all got to get the correct answer. So we know that 10 is the factor of 20 and it's a multiply of 5 because when you look at the multiplication of 5, because 5 when we multiply by 2, we got 10. Right, Sarah? 
Yes, correct, correct. Thank you, Aina, for your crystal clear explanation. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our third question. Next question, please. So, for our third question is, how many fatty acid molecules are present in a triglyceride molecule? Is it one? Is it two? Is it one? Is it three or zero? What do you guys think? How many? Two, one, three, zero. I bet this is quite a easy question, right? Okay. All done. Great. Who lit the bar? Still. Who? I can see that science body is on fire. All right. So without further ado, let's have Mr. Iswan to explain further about this question, please. Okay, thank you, Sarah. This question is so easy if you guys don't have any basic in biology during your time in secondary school or matriculation or university, you guys can answer this question because the answer, you can find the answer in the question, which is the term is try least right. Try is mean three. So the answer is three. If the term is no glyceride or solo glyceride, or zero glyceride might be uh, the answer. Okay, that's my explanation. Do you guys agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. I yes. agree with you. Absolutely. Very easy, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. If you guys don't know, we have a um, bicycle, right? F and we also have tricycle, which are have three tires in there. So three tri tires, tricycle. You guys get it? <laughs> okay. Moving on to Next question, please. So, the question is, an element is what? Dot, dot, dot. It's either a substance that cannot be split into simple substances, or consists of two or more different atoms, or a substance that can be split into simpler substances. What do you guys think? Come on, time is ticking. Three, two, one, and time's up. Wow, team of silence. I can see you lead on the board. All right, for this question, can we have from Department of Chemistry to explain further about this question? Okay, Sarah. So, why the answer is a substance that cannot be split into simpler substance? So, the answer is element is made up of only one type of atom. So, it is already in a simpler substance. So, uh, for example, like uh, helium, aluminium, oxygen, and also chlorine gas. So let me explain further about the pictures shown. So the first one is the element. So uh, as we know, the element is made up of only one atom. So the second one is a mixture. So a uh, mixture uh, consists of two or more different elements. So, uh, for example, like air. So air is a mixture of uh, oxygen, nitrogen, and also the other gases. Okay, so the last one is a compound. So compound consists of atom with two or more different elements. Uh, for example, like uh, sodium chloride. Okay, so that's all from uh, for my explanation for this question, Sarah. All right. Thank you very much, Akila, with this explanation. Yeah, I believe <laughs> I believe that all the viewers are clear with the explanation. All right, moving on to the fifth question, please. Shall we? So the question is x squared minus four equal to how many? What's what? 
equal to x plus 4 times by x minus 4, x plus 2 times by x minus 2, or x plus 1 times by x minus 2, or x times x minus 4. What do you guys think about the answer? I think this is quite an easy question for math student. Okay, so who live on the board now? So team of silence still lead on the board. Okay, I would like to ask from panel from other departments. Like, uh, I would like to ask Izwan. Why do you get, why do you think the answer is x plus two times by x minus two? Because is um, if we calculate properly, we we get the negative and negatives. In my opinion, what about how about you? I know. Yeah. That's the correct answer. <laughs> the correct answer is from the x square minus four. You can you can use the sum product pattern, which is which is x for you can use for sum product pattern, which you can turn the x square minus four turn into x square my plus two x minus two x minus four, and then you have to make it a group two x. 2x minus 4, then factorize the value of 2 to get the value of x plus 2. And then you will add in the group to get the answer which is x plus 2, x, x plus 2 and x minus 2, which is the answer. All right. Thank you very much, Aina. Very clear. Guys, do you know why I asked you from other departments? Because this is why we have panelists. We are, we need them to explain very clear to you guys, our viewers. Okay, next question, please. Shall we? So for the next question. Which of the following statements is true about the cell shown below? The biggest cell in human body, it is a deployed cell, or it is a male reproductive cell, or it is a somatic cell. What do you think the answer is? Time is ticking right. And time's up. All right, team of science still lead the board. I bet this is the easy question for you, for the participants since they all get all correct, right? Okay, can we have this one to explain about this question? Wait a minute. Can we see a structure? Is it a tadpole? No, uh, yeah. this is the uh, in terms of cell. So this is sperm. Sperm is the male, ga male gametes. <laughs> Go through the options. So. Okay. The first option, which is the biggest cell in human body, is wrong because the biggest cell in our body is ovum, which is derived from female. And the next question, the next answer is wrong also because uh, it is not a deployed cell. Each gamete, of, each gamete only bring about one set of chromosome, which is known as haploid cell. In order to achieve a deployed cell, the sperm and ova, which is derived from a uh, female, need to fuse in order to uh, form a deployed cell, which is known as zygote. The last one, it is a somatic cell, also wrong, because somatic cell, it can be defined as all, as all type of cell in our body, except for reproductive cell. For example, sperm and ovum. How about you guys? Yes, I agree with you, Izwan. Very clear what you explained before. Okay, moving on to the next question, shall we? So, for the next question, okay. Which law states that all currents entering a junction must be equal to all the currents out of a junction? Is it the Kirchhoff current law or Kirchhoff 
both the same law or own law? What do you guys think? Wow, all done. Before time's up. Good, good. Well done, everyone. Okay, so can we have Miss Ramzia to explain further about this question, shall we? I bet it's a easy question for everyone. So uh, when we see the question, uh, it asks which law state that all current entering a junction must be equal to all current out of a junction. So when we look at the diagram, we can see that when a current flowing I1, when it reaches a junction, it will split into two, which is I2 and I3. So we can conclude that I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So here, uh, when we have a look on the choice of answers, uh, we have Kirchhoff current law, Kirchhoff voltage law, and Ohm's law. So if you look at uh, these three laws over here, uh, Kirchhoff current law is basically about current, uh, basically state that current flowing into a junction must be equal to current flowing out of it. And the next one, Kirchhoff voltage law says that sum of all voltage in a closed loop of circuit must equal to zero. And the last one, Ohm's law says that, that uh, V equal to IR, so which is uh, volt voltage equal to current times with resistance. So here, uh, when we look at the question, I believe that this, uh, this situation is referring to first answer, which is Kirchhoff current law. Thank you, Ramzia, for the explanation. Oh my God, there's many law, but you explained it very brilliantly. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Okay, you're most welcome. Okay, next question, please. So, for your next question, we have what is the example of prokaryotes? Is it bacteria, protozoa, or fungi, or none of the above? Are you guys think? either bacteria, protozoa, fungi, or none? Hmm. Time is taking. Just one, one example of prokaryotes. All right, thumbs up. So, who lit the bar now? So, we can see that team of silence still lit on the bar. So, the correct answer is bacteria. Well done to the contestants that have correct. So, can we have is one to explain further about this question, please. Sarah, yeah. I do have a question. Why you keep on summoning my <laughs> name? Because uh, this is uh, in your field. Okay, okay. Before I explain, I need to uh, add uh, add information uh, regarding to prokaryotes. Prokaryotes do have enemies, uh, which is the eukaryotes. These two prokaryotes and eukaryotes they have differences in terms of membrane-bound organelles. For example, prokaryotes does not possess any mitochondria, nucleus, or um, chloroplast, but the eukaryotes possess all of these three. So uh, by looking at the options of answers, uh, the bacteria, bacteria is the correct answer because this there does, does not possess any true nucleus uh, as protozoa and fungi. That's the reason why bacteria is correct. Okay, very cool. Thank you, Iswan. Okay, moving on to the next question. So for the next question, we have what is seven percent of seven thousand and two hundred ringgit million here? Is it RM five fifty four or RM five hundred four or RM five hundred and forty or even RM four hundred and fifty. What do you guys think? Seven percent of seven thousand two hundred ringgit. Time's up. All 
All right, there was silence. Still me on the bar. Oh my God, we have 21 part group that have correct for this question. Okay, can we have Anina Anissa to explain more about this question, please? Wow, I yes. bet all this money, right? So, so this question is, what is the 7% of 7,200? So, firstly, you have just have to multiply the 7% to the 7,200, which is 7% can convert into so 0 0.07, which is the percent that multiply to 7,200 to get the answer, which is Ringgit Malaysia 504, not 540. All right, thank you. Don't get confused, 504. And 540, 504, 540, quite a speed. Okay, moving on to our next question. So, for the next question, we have. Ooh, you ready, Pavel? So, the question is one of the characteristics of metals on the periodic table is what do you guys think the characteristics? is they are not able to be oxidized or they are poor conductors of heat and electricity or they have free electron outer shell so what's the characteristic for the metal and time up well we have charlie angels we can see that woman lead the bar tonight for this question. All right, for this question, can we have Nur Akila from Department of Chemistry, shall we? Okay, Sarah. So before that, I want to ask Aina. Yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, what do you think? Uh, why metal have free electrons on the outer Free shell? electrons because it is low reactive. Hmm. Okay. Let me explain why. Okay. So, um, metal have free electron. It means that they have more electron than it should be. So, metal can tend to lose or donate electron to non-metal uh, to form orthotic spelling shells. So uh, for example, like sodium chloride. So which group of sodium Why? that belong to? So uh, yes, exactly group one. So sodium has one uh, free electron, so it can donate its free electron to, chloride, to chlorine to form orthotic valent shell. Yeah, so that's my explanation. Wow. Thank you very much, Akila. Very, very intelligent in chemistry. Okay, welcome, to chemistry. Sarah. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next question. So, from the diagram that shows here, which law is true? So, is it Boyle's law or Pascal's law or Charles' law or Avogadro's law? What do you guys think the law is? This is busy, okay? Not law as in lawyer. <laughs> Come on, guys. Time's taking time's up. Oh, you all get the answer before the time's up. All right, shall we angels lead the board? So for this question, from this question are more to physics. So we have Ramzia from Department of Physics. Can you explain our equation for today? Sure, Sarah. So here uh, we have two situation over here, which is the first one. Uh, when the bottle is inside a container of hot water, uh, the bottle will expand. And in the second situation, when the bottle is inside a container of ice cube, 
the bottle will compress. So here they ask from the diagram which law is true. So here when you look at the choice of question given over here, we were given uh, Boyle's law, Pascal's law, Charles law and Avogadro's law. So here when you look at the four laws, Boyle's law is basically about the relationship between pressure and uh, volume. Uh, it states that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. And the second one, Pascal law states that where in a closed container, a pressure exerted will be transmitted equally throughout the fluid. And the third one, Charles law states that uh, state the relationship between volume and temperature, which is uh, volume is directly proportional to temperature. Charles law will explain about how gas tend to expand when heated and compress when it is cold. And Avogadro's law says that the same volume of kind of gas with same temperature and pressure have the same number of molecules. Here we have four types of uh, law over here. Uh, when we look at the diagram, uh, we can conclude that this diagram are going to tell about Charles law. It's because when the bottle is inside the hot water, the gas inside the bottle will be will expand. That's why the bottle is expand. And the, for the second situation, when the bottle is inside the uh, ice cube, the gas uh, will be compressed. And that's why the bottle will, will compress too. So the answer will be Charles Law. All right. Any question from our panelists? Okay, we have is one to have some questions to Ramzia. Okay, Ramzia, just now I've heard you say that um, this law is regarding to the expansion, right? Yeah. So after we take a meal, then our stomach get enlarged, expand. Can we apply this law? <laughs> no, it's right. Basically, we can't use this law to explain that situation. Okay. I see. Okay, moving on to the next question, please. <laughs> So for the next question, pi can be correctly written as a fraction. Is this statement true or false? Hmm. Is it true or false? Pi, pi. There is a symbol of pi. Is it can be written as a fraction? Hmm. Pi, I just know to it. Okay, time's up. So I have a question. Okay, we can see so mom boy they need the board now. So I have a question for Akila. What do you guys what do you think? What do you think about this pie? Is it food or something? Mm. I don't know, but uh, we we used it in mathematics, right? Uh, to calculate like uh the volume of uh sil uh cone, right? So yeah. so let me ask the let me ask uh Aina. Yes, Akira. So can you explain further about the uh the answers? So, what we say is correct. We use pi in to find volume to the area, and so pi. The answer is false, but everyone says it's true, but it's it's not the correct answer. So pi, pi is a is an irrational number that you can write it as a as a non infinite decimal. So in high school, we learn we write we write pi as tw uh, twenty two over seven and 3.142 but that that is not the exact answer for the pi because when you calculate on the calculator um turn, uh, then you turn on the calculator the pi can't get the i can't get the fraction number it will be in uh, it will be in decimal only not fraction so 22 over 7 and 3.142 is just an uh, approximate number for the pi not the fraction. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Aina. I bet all the participants now know what's the correct 
terms for this pi. Uh, it can be written as a fraction. Okay, clear? All right, moving on to the next question, please, shall we? Okay, so for the next question, we have what is the correct chemical formula when aluminum 3 plus oxygen 2 minus reacting together? What, you guess, what is the correct chemical formula for this? Is it the first one, second, third, or fourth? Time is ticking. And time's up. All right. So, Mampu Bori already lit on the board. I think this is a quite uh, easy question, right? Because all get correct. Well done. Congratulations, guys. You are really intelligent students. All right. Can we have Akila to explain this question, please? Okay, I'm really proud of you all that uh, most of most of you answered the question correctly. So, why the answer is Al2O3 and why uh, not Al3O2? So, uh, first first of all, we must know the oxidation, uh, oxidation number of aluminium is plus 3 and for oxygen is 2 minus. So, what we, we're going to do this uh, we interchange the charge. So why we uh, we must interchange the charge? Because we must balance the overall charge. So after we interchange, we get the Al2O3. So that's the answer that Al2O3. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I bet you don't have some questions for this one. Okay, hi, Kila. I have a question. Yes. What is the chemical formula if we exchange our heart? <laughs> okay, um, I think I don't have answer for, for your question. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just joking. Okay, thank you very much, Iswan for some questions that are very funny. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next question, please. Okay, so for the next question, the term for organisms which are unable to form their own food is autotrophs, eukaryotes, heterotrophs, or prokaryotes. What do you guys think? For curious, I bet you guys all uh, have listened to this word right before. So what do you guys think? The term that we are unable to form their own food. Time's up, guys. Okay, let's see who lead on the board now. Wow, we can see women lead. Now, Charlie Angels, well done. Okay, can we have Izwan to answer, uh, to explain more about this question, please? Shall we? Okay, before I explain this question, I would like to ask Aina. Aina, what does it mean by trove? Oh, trove. Trove is seeding. Wow, you are so brilliant. No wonder you are competitive for mathematics. Okay, as the trove is feeding, there are, so we only have two options for this answer. Which is which is the autotroph and the heterotroph. Auto is means self and troph means feeding, so it's self feeding. The animal in the autotroph, uh, they are able to form its own food. For example, producer, they are able to convert the inorganic nutrient into organic nutrient. But heterotroph, which is hetero means other and troph means feeding, so they need to consume any other animals in order to obtain energy. Okay, that's my explanation. All right, thank you very much, guys. See. I know so can get the answer correct about the tropes meaning that I mean they are very brilliant. That's why they are commentator or even panelists for tonight. So can we go to the next question?
Correct to coordinate squeaking. An echo is what's known as the repeated sound when sound waves bounce off other objects. Is it true or false? What do you guys think this term is? Is it true or false? Echo is what's known as the repeated sound when sound waves bounce off other objects. Time is taking guys. Time out. Wow. Guys, I bet this is a uh, easy question, right? Because all of you get true and correct answer. Congratulations. I'm so proud of the semi final round. All right. Can we have Ramzia to ask me further about this question, please? Shall we? So, well, so far, I'm so proud of them because all of them got it right. So here, uh, the question said that an echo uh, is quite known as the repeated sound when sound waves bounce off other objects. So here, uh, it is true because echo is the sound that caused by the reflection of sound waves from a surface back to its listener. For an example, when we are in an empty room, when we shout inside that, uh, we can hear our voice back. It's because the sound waves, when, when the sound waves strike on the wall or any object in the room, uh, we uh, it will bounce back and we will hear our own voice. So hearing this phenomenon is what called as echo. So the answer is true. All right. Oh, I bet Izan have some questions. Ramzia, can you demonstrate how the echoes work? Um, I bet I can't demonstrate it here. <laughs> oh, uh, give it a try. <laughs> All right. It's okay. Can we move on to the next question, please? So for, for the next question, we have what is the function of the Kind of clean. What is it? What is the function? Is it a, as a catalyst, as a coloring, as an indicator, is acid base titration, or as a nail polish? What do you think the answer is? Function of it. All right, time's up, guys. <laughs> All right, well done, Charlie Angels, and welcome everyone. I'm so proud of them. Okay, so we have Akila from the Department of Chemistry to ask me further about this question. Okay, Sarah, uh, I want to ask you based on the picture shown. Can you tell me what is the color of phenolphthalein? Um, the color is pink. Yes, it's correct. The color is pink. So, uh, phenolphthalein can act as indicator in acid-base titration, where it can change color into pink in basic solution. So, it also can uh, act as a signal to end the titration. So that's my uh, explanation. All right, clear. It cannot be as a nail polish, okay? Even though the color is pink. <laughs> yes. Okay, moving on to our next question, please, shall we? So for the question is the ability of substance to return to its shape after being deformed is called what is it called guys is it the elasticity or flexibility integrity or mass of it? what do you guys think it is this is quite a easy answer right uh i mean easy question right <laughs> Okay, time's up, everyone. Okay, which group leaves the board now? So we can see 
Charlie Angels, still the honorable. Oh, wow, guys, I'll get correct. Okay, can we have Ramzia to ask me further about this question? Sure. So here, uh, this question, I guess, is quite easy too because we have heard about this term from secondary school, I believe. So here it offers the ability of substance to return to its shape after being deformed. Uh, this term uh, basically referring to elasticity. So elasticity, elasticity is the ability of material to resume to its no, uh, normal shape after being stretched or compressed. So the answer will be elasticity. All right, thank you very much, Ramzia. I thought they will get confused between elasticity and flexibility, but they are intelligent. They got all correct. Okay, moving on to next question. Number eight, which is the longest distance is between all of it? Is it 350,000 centimeters or 165.5 meters or 0 0.2 kilometers or even 750,000 millimeters? What do you guys think the answer is? Guys, this is quite a tricky question, right? Time's up. Okay, look at the score. Wow. Okay, can we have Aina for this question to explain why the answer is 750,000 millimeters? Why is it? Wow, this question is so easy, but everyone can get the wrong answer because firstly, people must, the participant must Look at the 350,000, that's a large number. They thought, they must thought that it's a large number, so the longest distance, right? So next, uh, so that's not the point is, which the, which is the longest distance? For, so for the first, first thing, we have to change, convert the answer to the same unit, which is, um, so it will be easier to convert the units to meter. So for the 350,000 centimeter, you can convert two, me two meter by multiplying 0 0.01 to get the answer, which, which is 300, 3,500. And you can get, get convert the 0 0.01 kilometer to meter by multiplying 1,000 to get the answer, which is 10 meter. And for the last answer, which is 750,000, you can convert it to meter by multiplying with 0 0.001. And you get the answer, which is the longest distance, which is 750 meter, which is the same with, with, with the 750,000 millimeter. That's why the answer is... 750,000 and not 350,000. People might get confused. All right. Very, very clear explanation. Am I right, viewers? Okay. So, as I thought, this is some of tricky question, right? Because you need to convert it first, then you will get the correct answer. Okay, moving on to the Next question, please. Second last question is... So, for the question 19, is the correct chemical formula for magnesium hydroxide is... What do you guys think? Is it... MgOH, Mg2OH, MgOH2, or Mg2OH. What did you see the answer? All right. Time's up, guys. 
Charlie Angels, I'm so proud of all the girls. Oh, okay, okay, no bias here. <laughs> all right. Can, can Akila please explain about this question, please? Shall we? Yes, Sarah. So, uh, it seems that this question is more or less similar than previous question, right? So, no wonder all of you can answer this correctly. So uh, let me explain. So as you can see that the diagram shown that it has Mg for magnesium and also OH for hydroxide. So uh, you can see that Mg is plus two while the OH is a minus one. So what we're gonna do, we just interchange the charge to balance the overcharge. So that's why we got MgOH2. So you know that uh, it has two molecules of hydroxide. So, so that's all. All right. Thank you very much, Akila, for your explanation. All right. I believe that all of you are very eager to answer the last question. Am I right? Okay, moving on to our last questions for tonight. So, for the last question for the semi-final round is closed circulatory system occurs in earthworm or snail or fuchs or none of them, none of earthworm. Snail, fuchs, what do you guys think? Close the culture system occurs in. All right, thumbs up. So for the last question, the correct answer is earth, earth warm. Okay, can we have our Indonesian panelists from the Department of, of Biology, Mr. Izwan? Okay, thank you, Sarah. I've been waiting for such a long time. Finally, you call my name. <laughs> okay, I would like to ask Ramzia, uh, does we have a circulatory system? Of course, we have. Wow, so good. Okay, uh, circulatory system, it can be divided into two, which is the open and close. The difference between these two is open circulatory system, the blood uh, does not enclose in the vessel or vein, but in the closed circulatory system, the blood is enclosed in the, in the vein and vessel. So, uh, earthworm, the correct answer is worm because worm does possess, uh, the blood is enclosed in, this, in the vessel. But snail, uh, they are released into the cavity, which is you know as hemo cell. And the next option is flux. Flux is warm. Before I explain, the flux is from the phylum platyhelminthes, or the or the common name is the uh flatworm. The flux is very small and there is no and there is no circulatory system. Uh, they, uh, they don't need to circulate blood to their part of the body because they're able to perform simple diffusion in order to uh, have a gas exchange. Okay, that's my explanation. Do you guys understand what I'm talking about? I know yes. it's quite easy. Yes, it's right. Good. Yes, yes, we are all clear. I bet all the viewers and participants also clear with the with your explanation. Okay, so that's all for tonight's question. All right. That's mean that's the end of 20 questions. It's all the last take a look. Who's our top three in the leaderboard? So let's see who lead the board. So for the third place, Samampo Bole, then followed by Quadrificolio, and the first is Team of Silence. All right, we will announce the top 20 contestants who are qualified for, the, for this round to go for the final round on next Monday in our WhatsApp group, okay? 
All right, so now, before we end of our semi-final round tonight, we would like to moving on to the Q&A session. Let's take a look at some of the comments from our live viewers. All right, first question from, who do we have here? Sarah. Yes? There's something I want to correct right now. All right. For the question, for the eight, 18, for the 18th question, the correct answer, which is 350,000, it will convert to 3,500 meter. So that's the correct answer. Sorry for the mistake. All right, it's okay. Everyone makes, make mistakes, right? But please take it as a lesson, everyone. All right, thank you, Aina, for the clarification. Okay, moving on to the Q&A session now. Okay, for the first one, we have MPZ. A quick question. May I know who Young arranged the periodic table? Who arranged the periodic table? So? Okay, for this question, the answer is um, Dimitri Mendeleev. So, uh, for your information, he is the Russian chemist that devised the periodic classification on the chemical elements, which uh, the elements were arranged in order of increasing atomic weight from left to the right. All right. I bet she answered your question, right? I'm busy. Thank you, Akila, for the answer okay moving on to our second question from Kriya mutia what indicator can we use other than phenophylin <laughs> again chemistry question huh yeah again okay so uh the other indicator that uh, we can use such as um uh, methyl violet um bromophenol blue Methyl orange or methyl red? All right. So I hope uh, I, I answer uh, your question. Thank you very much again, Akila, for the question, uh, answer. Okay, let's okay, go Sarah. on to the last question for tonight, okay? From Umu Hanisa. What is the difference between open and closed circulatory system? So, let's have this one here. Okay. Okay, as I mentioned before, the difference between the open and closed circulatory system is in terms of the vessel, as the blood in the open circulatory system is not enclosed in the vessel. But in closed circulatory system, the blood is enclosed in the vessel. Another um, explanation is the close of the close circuitry system is efficient compared to the open it's more efficient all right thank you very very much okay as i mentioned before that's the last question from us tonight with that we have reached the end of first with with that we have reached the end of our semi-final round of pasta coliseum let's give the participants a big round of applause for completing the quiz and hey to you live viewers for sticking out with me till the end thank you to all panelists for joining in as well i learned a lot today and i bet all the viewers and participants also learned a lot for today questions that are not answered in the comment section during our q a will be shared on our instagram or facebook page pasta underscore upm so don't forget to follow all right so i'm sarah as the host for tonight would like to apologize if i've done any mistakes throughout the event thank you to our lecturers committees participants and youtube live viewers for contributing and for joining the this, this stage of pasta coliseum thank you so much for your time dear participants please check our whatsapp group for the google form link to make to mark your attendance no worries we do not forget you all, our dear YouTube live viewers. Please check comment down below for the Google form link or scan QR code that will be presented on the screen after this. That's all from me, Sarah.
thank you very much till we meet again again next week on the final round bye have a nice day take care